Salman Khan is once again in the spotlight, not for his films, but for his health. On the great Indian couple show, Salman made a shocking revelation. He has a brain aneurysm, a serious condition that can turn life-threatening if not treated in time. And that's not all. He has also been battling trigeminal neuralgia, a rare nerve disorder known for causing unbearable pain. But what exactly are these conditions? How dangerous can they be? And is it really possible to manage such severe health issues while leading a demanding life like Salman's? Today, we'll speak to medical expert to break it all down. The risk, the treatment, and what this means for people going through the same. So, what is actually brain aneurysm? So, brain aneurysm is outpouching from the artery that carries the blood. The aneurysm can happen on any of the arteries in whole of the body, but when it happens in the brain, it can be more catastrophic because in simplified terms for layman, it is like bomb in the head. Because when it ruptures for the first time, the severity with which it causes brain hemorrhage can mm -hmm. be life-threatening and patient might not reach to us to the hospital also for treatment. And with one brain hemorrhage, out of 100, if the brain aneurysm ruptures, it can kill nearly 40-50% of patients there and then. The rest of the patients that reach the hospital, that time bomb is still ticking. Not because it has ruptured once, it will close. It can re-rupture again and the maximum risk is in first four days. Again, being in the hospital, it can cause such a catastrophic re-bleeding again that it can be a threat to life in again 50% of patients. So these aneurysms, when beyond 3 to 4 millimeter in size, are better treated. But less than 3 to 4 millimeter of aneurysms, which are detected incidentally when MRI or CT scan is done, for our audience, we would like you to uh, describe more about aneurysm. What is it? Because this is... Outpouching. Of... Yeah. It's, it's outpouching from an artery, which we can also call a balloon from an artery. Mm -hmm. So when this balloon ruptures from a single spot, it yeah. can just cause about 5 to 7 ml of blood leakage in the brain. But the pressure with which that blood leaks... That is what causes the brain paralysis, complete brain paralysis at that point in time, which leads to death of the patient. So what are the common symptoms? The aneurysm presents one, if it is not more than 2.5 centimeter, it just presents when it bleeds. It can also cause a warning leak wherein just about 0.5 ml uh, blood leaks and the patient has a classical description that Dr. Sahab, I had a headache which I have never experienced in past and it like explodes, something exploded in my head. Their description of headache for the warning leak is very, very classical. So such patients, they need to be investigated at the right time. And no blood investigation or x-ray helps in this. You have to do a CT scan followed by one or the other form of angiogram, which can be in the CT scan machine called CT angiogram, MR machine called MR angiogram to pick up these aneurysm. Now, this is regarding the leak presentation of the aneurysm. Hmm. When these aneurysms, they are very large in size, they can press on the adjacent nerve, for example, which they can cause a visual problem, blurring in vision, a double vision, eyeball not moving. That happens in very few patients where the aneurysm is very large. But the commonest presentation is bleeding. Brain hemorrhage. What happens when a brain aneurysm ruptures and what are the immediate consequences? So it depends on how much of amount of bleeding has occurred. There are grades. If the minimum grade, minimum bleeding, 
patient will have excruciating headache vomiting followed by persistent headache that is where they report to the doctor such patients ideally should reach the right specialty and that is only neurosurgery where they should reach because we know that if ct scan is falsely negative because of a small amount of blood but if the presentation is very classical then we take out some amount of fluid from the spine which is called lumbar puncture if it is blood stain that is also indicative of aneurysmal brain rupture and uh, aneurysmal rupture and then we do the angiogram in such patients so that is the commonest presentation if the bleeding is too much patient may, may go into coma might become drowsy might have one sided paralysis so all depends on where is the aneurysm and where it has ruptured in the brain okay so can a brain aneurysm affect a person's daily life even if it is not ruptured usually not as i said only if it is big in size it can cause uh, paralysis of certain particular nerves but otherwise aneurysm will not bother the patient till it actually ruptures okay so what are the treatment options for aneurysm Okay, so when I was doing my neurosurgery, that is 30 years back, the only modality that my teachers practiced and for last 100 years was open brain surgery, wherein you would put a clip on the neck of the aneurysm. So if this is the artery and there is an outpouching from here, you put a clip. So no blood goes there, it will not rupture. But that was an open brain surgery. Now for last about 25, 27 years, we have another form of uh, minimally invasive procedure without opening the head or doing open brain surgery. You can coil the aneurysm, you can put the coil along with balloon assistance you can also put the coil with a stent depends on what type of aneurysm it is which is a minimally invasive technique and it is possible for lots many aneurysms now there are certain aneurysms depending upon the anatomy the shape uh, the surgery might be essential, but in most of the other aneurysms, coiling is very much possible. The way it has, the treatment has transformed in heart diseases also, where from bypass surgery, many patients undergo uh, the angioplasty, something similar to that. So how critical is the early detection of this? And how can... Very, we very critical. One should not wait if the aneurysm is more than four millimeter in size uh, and is amenable to surgery and or coiling, the patient should be treated and not be left for devastating complications. Of course, if patient is say 80, 84 year old, it's an incidental aneurysm, then you might still explain the pros and cons of not treating and you can leave such aneurysm. It all depends on multiple factors, of course. Okay. So who is mostly at risk when this develops? Like the age group. Uh, sorry? The age group. The age group of age people group? who are mostly at risk. Between 40 and 60 years of age, these aneurysms, they enlarge in size, but we have even operated young patients. These are for aneurysms who have a congenital weakness in the wall but there is are other causes of aneurysm formation that is head injury can damage the arterial wall from where gradually the aneurysm can form certain okay. forms of even wrong exercises can cause a crack in the artery that can lead to a different type of aneurysm so there are certain other causes but the commonest cause is weakness in the wall which is more of a idiopathic aneurysm formation okay so what steps can be taken to reduce the risk of developing a brain aneurysm? Not in our hands except for preventing head injuries. These are congenital wall uh, weaknesses. What one can always do, which is otherwise also required for a healthy uh, individual, is once you are detected with high blood pressure, the blood pressure should be strictly controlled under the right guidance of the right doctor because hypertension or high blood pressure 
itself leads to increased chances of bleeding from aneurysm and increase in size of aneurysm. Okay. So can aneurysm be like genetic? There is a genetic wall weakness which subsequently leads to formation of aneurysm or increase in size of aneurysm. Salman Khan has also mentioned about AV malformation. What is it and how serious is this condition? AV malformation is an abnormal tuft of vessels. Hmm. These vessels again have a very weak wall. So these aneurysms commonly present either with hemorrhage, that hmm. is brain hemorrhage, or they can also present with fits. Or mm. if they are large and they are stealing blood supply from the surrounding brain, they can present with paralysis. So it all depends on where is the AVM, what is the size of AVM, whether mm. it is an incidentally detected AVM. Uh, AVM can be left alone if the hemodynamics of AVM are such and they are not causing any symptom to the patient but needs to be warned of the uh, consequences that can happen with such AVMs which might rupture and cause threat to life. What exactly is trigeminal neuralgia and why is it often referred to as the suicide disease? So trigeminal neuralgia is a condition wherein the fifth nerve, that is the trigeminal nerve, has certain changes within it which causes sharp shooting electric pain. In our textbook, it is compared to labor pain. It is compared to kidney stone pain, which are excruciating pains. You can imagine somebody in labor pain now and then, every day, every time. That is how bad trigeminal neuralgia is because it is electric current on the face depending upon the part of the nerve involved. It is a very bad pain. I mean, we do get patients coming with trigeminal neuralgia literally in tears or it gets aggravated when they chew, when they sip. So at times we get patients in the OPD wherein they say that we have lost about 30% of our weight in last four months because we cannot eat or drink. The moment we eat or drink, the sharp shooting pain occurs. That is how the um, trigeminal neuralgia pain is. Very bad. So what are the precautions for it? How can somebody be uh, like can be aware of it? No, so trigeminal neuralgia, uh, the patient cannot do much about it. If, it, okay. if he has a disease of trigeminal neuralgia, mm -hmm. it should be investigated properly with the MRI, whether there is any tumor sitting which is irritating the nerve and causing this short circuiting which leads to pain or mm -hmm. there is some artery sitting on the nerve. So those are the investigation and treatment. Not every patient would need surgery for trigeminal neuralgia. There are very good medications which can control neuralgia. But if mm. patient has intractable neuralgia and on MRI, you either find a tumor or you find an artery sitting on that nerve, then a very fine neuronavigation guided microscopic surgery for trigeminal neuralgia has excellent results. How common are these neurological disorders and what can be done to prevent them? So all the three diseases that we have just been discussing, uh, AVM, aneurysm, and trigeminal neuralgia, these are not related to individuals' lifestyle, diet, stress. They are just there. They are, if they happen, they do happen, and nothing much can be done. But to get it diagnosed at the right time, to follow right specialty doctor's advice, and not end up in complication is what the society needs to do. Thank you for the insights. I know this video will be very helpful for all our audiences. My pleasure, ma'am. Thank you.